today is let me look at my watch because I'll be losing track of what days it is. January 30th, 2024. What you gotta say to that dude that commented in that last video? I can't say it on YouTube. You can't do it. It's okay, it's okay. Everybody gets everybody gets ridiculed, bro. I, I'm I'm I keep an eye look out for the comments for when they try to like uh for when they're gonna scrutinize me for something. But uh I'm not gonna delete the comments, bro. That's just weak. I'll just respond as politely as I can. Um, Look here, boy. Not even just that. Like the comment I just showed you, where the dude called me an expert. I'm not an expert. I will never call. Regular regular service. Team. I, I'm, I'll say I'm regular regular for sure. I'm regular regular. But issue with this house, real quick. I know this isn't really a good intro, but the call for this house is no AC. We got here, went inside, it was running in heat mode. So we switched it to cool. This unit right here came out, the condenser was steaming, but it's just because the compressor was running, it's cold outside, the fan motor wasn't running. So first thing Jacob's gonna do is check this capacitor. I'm not about to get the phone down there. What you reading on that? That's a 39.2 out of what? 4.5. Oh, wait, we'll go back to it. Go back to it. I, I don't know if it registered completely. You got it on there? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, 0.99. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now that was dead. So that that cat's probably a 40 slash 5. If you can read the tag. Or does this Goodman just have the weird QR code on it? QR code on it? I'm going to show you how to read these. I'm not an expert. <laughs> oh, okay. Forty-five-five, yeah. Forty-five-five. Yeah. Oh shoot! All right, go. Let's see if we got one in the truck. Yes, sir. Grand Air Solutions. We always bring solutions. Luckily, I need to go stock up, but I did happen to have a correctly sized capacitor on the truck today. I wonder if this is gonna shake. If I can hear the oil in it. Nope. Nope. No oil in it, but. She is bad. We did verify it with a bench test. And it's just, the bench test is just where you literally just take it off the the mount, set it aside, discharge it, all that good jazz. But, jazz you like jazz music? Yeah. You don't seem like a jazz kind of dude. I'm not gonna lie. You seem more like a, like a rap drill kind of person. Love Nothing's wrong with that. Nothing's wrong with that. <laughs> Welcome to the south, where all the white people are. <clears throat> hey man, how long it take to put on a capacitor? Bro, I had to wait to start the video. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put the cover on yet. Are oh, you just trying to check the wiring? Purple is common, I think. Red and purple are common. Okay, yeah. Purple is a common off the fan motor. Even though it's like almost, it's probably just about to reach 40 degrees here in the next hour. Uh, she won't be able to run the AC right now, but by about 2, 3 o'clock when it says it's supposed to be 60 outside, if she gets hot in here, she should be able to get it going. Caps on, wired up. Now don't put your meter away yet. Hold on. Put your meter back out. We got to get an amp draw on the motor. So, yeah, put it to that. Hit the select button. Shows both. Put it around. Before you put it up, before you put the disconnect in, put the meter around. Um, put it around the purple wire off that capacitor. Should still pull amps from there. Should be. And let's see if it kicks on. And back to life. Oh my God. Do that right off the top. So what's your amp draw? 1.02? So that don't sound the greatest, but it should run for a little bit longer. So what you want to do is under, normally I'm going to suspect that that data plate may be gone by now, but you would compare the amp draw on that to what the amp draw on the data plate says the motor is supposed to be. 
should I say like fan mo 1.5? So you're at 1.02 or 1.2? 1.03. You're fine. It's not under a full load right now because it's, it's really not that cold. I mean, not that hot outside. So it's not really stressing. It's working easily. But it's 74 degrees in the house. We can still go get Delta T's and move on to the next call. Halfway through this restriction clean out, just took apart that fitting right there to get the piston out of here. We've already blown through it with nitrogen through the manifold. I'm gonna get the little blow gun hose that we've got right there and blow through it this way to try to see how much we can have blast back out um, just to be safe. I've already blown through each, each line coming out that way and out this way about three or four times now but I just want to be sure I mean I don't think the camera maybe the camera can see through it yeah I think looks fairly clean so go ahead get this set up so we can get this thing done get these people heating and cooling again with this heat pump package unit so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this thingy yeah. and put it down into that evaporator coil port it should be able to blow all the way through and we should if, if there's anything stuck in it, it should blow out the other side. So, yep. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Do you feel anything coming through there? Nope. Nothing? I can feel right. it straight through the... The valve could be stuck the other way. Do it the other way. Yep. I'm just doing this just to make sure. I've already blown through the manifold, so... Feel air coming through the other side? Oh, it's kind of tricky. A bit. You can move the pipe out of the way. Like, hold on. You can move the. Oh, I'd have to unscrew that. Oh. Oh, did that just fall in the pipe? Am I stupid? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, it's no, a drain no, pan. No, no. Alright, thank God. So you can move this out the way just a little bit. We'll blow back through it with that. So I'll cut this to off and blow it all out. We'll hook it, back up. hook it back up to the manifold, do one last blow through on both sides of the port, and then we'll hook this back up. And get this on a vacuum and then get it all weighed in. And well, I can't, we can't really weigh this one in because I'm sure everybody else runs into this. Every once in a while, you got no data plate, so you just gotta try and just guess. So we'll start off with about four pounds, let it run in heat mode, and <coughs> charge it up from there. So, due to this being a heat pump, I'm going to assume, because I have no data plate. What's up? The what? The micron gauge? In the pack out piece right under the cooler. They they probably couldn't hear that, but I'll say you can say it on the camera when you come back. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, um, I'm gonna assume that the test pressure for this because this is a heat pump, so both the condenser and the evaporator coil are gonna run high side pressure, high pressure at some point in time. Um, I do have enough nitrogen in my tank to where I could probably put this up to about 500. But I'm going to run it to about 325. Kind of seems like a good little midway there. Um, and I will hold pressure and see what it can do. I don't know if anybody, anybody that has these, if you didn't know, there's a test tightness feature on the field piece S-Mans. Um, it's a very, very nice little tool. You just press and hold that. I'm going to let the pressure kind of equalize for a little bit. Bring the soap bubbles too. I just want to make sure. 
and we'll go ahead and hit enter on this and try to get everything tidied up and ready to weigh the refrigerant back in while this is running the pressure test so everything went good with the pressure test um, I took a picture of that I'll just put it on the video for later got the one pipe of vacuum method right now because I don't have a second one I pulled the Schrader core from that that one because it was hissing sitting right here I don't there's a little bit of a nick on that we'll go ahead and just replace it anyway I'll just clean this off I don't know yet but micron gauge hooked up already pulling down fairly well um, I don't know ever since I've seen people on social media start doing the one hose method or even just the two hose but just not pulling it through the manifold the vacuums go very fast um, we'll see how long this takes it's actually been going for maybe like two minutes now and it's already at 4,000 so I wonder how, how low in microns do you think we should get first off let me ask you this do you know how low it should be no all right I'm not teaching you enough <laughs> that and we're not pulling enough vacuums because we don't do a whole lot of this that much and you haven't been able to experience it that much but the I believe code like when you go to take your test for your for the cert certification um, I believe on the test if I'm correct somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong but it should be 500 that's the lowest you want now I'll admit there's a lot of times where we're running like balls to the wall and stuff like that and we can't I can't always get it to 500 but I'll at least try to keep it below a thousand if I cut that vacuum off and let's just say it gets to about 750 if I cut it off and it stays around 750 I know I'm good I should I just should have pulled a deeper vacuum but at any point in time if you cut off the vacuum and you see your micron gauge going up still and especially if it goes over a thousand you still have a leak um so we'll see where we're at here in a couple minutes but while we're waiting for that we're just gonna clean up um, get the scale out for the tank to weigh everything back in put the nitrogen tank up I do love this this regulator you just have the off braze purge and test um, in my opinion it's just way better for me than having to carry like one of those big ones um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Victor brand one I think it is the big bulky one but because that can still do the braze and you can dial in the pressure a lot better for the pressure test but I just got to know that there's enough Come on, focus up. That there's just enough, you know, nitrogen in the tank for me to do a pressure test and I'll do one. But let's go ahead and clean up. I've already cleaned off the coils and the evaporator coil the last time I was here when I diagnosed this. So we'll go from there. Been running for about six minutes now. We're at 575. So I think the decay test is you just turn this off. You can hear an audible noise in your pump cut the pump off and we'll see how much this goes back up so 577 isn't bad shoot it's not even moving right now really it's still going down so we'll touch back and see where it is for the final judgment on this just explain to Jacob what a decay test is and to my understanding of what it is and we're pretty much sticking around 564 565 so I'm gonna give this the thumbs up and we're gonna go ahead and start charging it so I don't I don't know if anybody has a good idea of how to tell where to start on a system that doesn't have a data plate that tells you how much the package unit is supposed to take. Um, but it's a three ton. I know that much. So or 36,000 BTUs of cooling, I guess. I don't know, but I just started at 3.6. I got Jacob going inside to cut the thermostat to heat mode. Um, and we're going to we're going to go from there. Just looking at the pressures, I'm, I know I'm probably still low. Um, I was taught a good rule of thumb is when you hook up your pressures, when you hook up your 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 probes or your manifold or whatever, if the system is sitting and the saturated, of course this cuts off right now. Come on. If your saturation pressure temperatures are close to the outdoor temperature, then you're you're pretty close to uh, to a system being completely full. 
um, just because the system is sitting in outdoor ambient conditions. So it should be close and relatively um, the same as the outdoor temperature. Judging by my watch, we're looking at about 46 degrees in the area of Augusta. So somewhere around 40 is what it should be sitting at. So I know I still got a good ways to go. So a little bit of background on this on this service call. Um, I came here yesterday and I didn't film anything, but the, the problem with the system initially was that the thermostat inside had a Honeywell T6 on it and the, the minus button wouldn't work. I could increase the temperature, but I could never decrease whatever the set point was, whether it was in heat or in cool. Um, so once I replaced the thermostat, I put a brand new simple uh, Pro, one, uh, two heat, one cool, thermostat on the wall system started right back up i noticed my because it was like 60 something degrees outside and it was like 75 in the house he wanted to run the ac so i put it in cool mode to see what it's going to do i had like a three degree delta t um in ac mode you should have roughly around where i i was told rule of thumb around 20 degrees depending on you know obviously outside conditions and indoor conditions quality of duct work things of that nature blah 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 um, so once I got the system going, I came out here and noticed the condenser coil was fairly dirty and the evaporator coil, which is a micro channel was slap dirty. So I cleaned both of those before I wanted to diagnose any refrigeration issues. Once those were cleaned, had the fan motor just running by itself to dry off the evaporator coil and then kicked it back on in AC mode. I was still having issues. Um, issues were that the where that piston was in the video um at that connection going down and into the evaporator coil that was freezing up and frosting over everything else was fine um so i was like really confused but i took temperature measurements across the filter dryer to eliminate the filter dryer being an issue um and those i only had like a one degree across both so i knew the filter dryer wasn't stopped up but that's what kind of led me to this uh I have the door panel on now because I learned on a bunch of Goodman package units if you leave that door off while you're trying to adjust the pressures at any point or even just check them you're gonna have a faulty reading because most air is gonna be then pulling from this area instead of only the condenser slash evaporator coil if you're working on a heat pump um, so right now with the system running that's what we're looking at and I'm about four point four pounds in there this is running in heat mode so I know my liquid line pressure should be close to about a hundred degrees above what the outdoor is um, that's just rule of thumb so I should be closer to about 130 140 degrees right now so that's what we're gonna try to shoot for um, and see how that Delta T looks but I just wanted to talk about that for any new techs if you're having to work on a system that you have to take a panel off to get to the compressor to hook up your gauges and everything before you start diagnosing any type of refrigeration issues put that door panel back on um, it'll save you a lot of headache so Jacob Jacob noticed that we're having some issues with some ducts uh, not blowing any air but the returns pulling in great so we got uh, the flex coming off going into what looks to be that's the return down there so the supply goes to square duct and it's a beautiful trunk line going all the way down but you can feel a good amount of warmth, com warmth coming from up under there so we're going to check and see if we've got any disconnected ducts i will admit i hate this part of the job i hate crawl spaces but we're gonna try and see what we can find up under here uh. Water tank here. Let's get the let's get the crawling. Let's see, I see one down there. That's for the kitchen. I know that. What is this? Better not be no snakies. I, think it is, I don't like no snakes. <laughs> well, there's one right there. Laying down. Laying down. That's the one for that kitchen that you was talking about. That's probably where a good amount of the airflow is is dropping out. No, it's not a sinkhole. It's just, I think this is where this was originally. Oh, okay. But they redid some stuff because some of that looks like new copper. We'll but the hanging strap and some you don't even need the hanging strap. 
grab the uh just grab your drill like three screws and some masking tape because all you got to do is just pick that pipe up and put it back in the collar the collar oh the head i thought you meant like like hanging strap no yeah get the headlamp go ahead take care of that the pressures and everything look fine though now i'm gonna go back and put it on the camera oh yeah oh god Whew. we're gonna get that going that's probably why a lot of, oh my god that's why the delta t wasn't looking right and i didn't catch it on camera but i noticed i had my high temperature or not high temperature i had my liquid line clamp on the small liquid line that is attached to the filter dryer um in heat mode you have to put it on the the bigger suction line coming out of the evaporator coil going into the compressor um so i just moved that clamp around and now my liquid line temp is looking a heck of a lot better jacob's going to take care of that vent up under the house and these people will be able to have heat and ac again so that's probably that's going to conclude it for this call I'm going to get this wrapped up and get on to the next one but um yeah that's that's the that's the beauty of just making sure you check everything um i mean a lot of stuff on this i just did I, like i said i didn't catch that one part on camera but i changed that and got everything looking a heck of a lot better so if anybody has any tips or tricks on how I could have either done this service better or, um, you know, cleaned, the, cleaned anything more, uh, any tips or tricks, man, be greatly appreciated. So we're going to go ahead and get this one completed so we can get on to the next one. <sighs> I goofed up. I realized, I mean, not, not terribly. I haven't, don't know if I truly goofed up yet, but... Uh, I realized we tested the system in heat mode just to be safe I'm testing it in cool mode um, even though again it's still like in the 50s outside and it's only just like in the 60s in the house so I'm not 100% sure exactly how this should turn out but I want to make sure that at least if it's hard to explain I pretty much got the condenser clogged up to simulate that the system's getting hotter and it's a hot day um, my hot both pressures are slowly increasing drops down a little bit then it goes up more drops down a little bit goes up more um not exactly ideal temperatures but again when i came here yesterday it was like it probably felt like 70 outside right now it still feels like it's like in the 50s um so I'm doing the best that I can to try to figure this out. I don't really have like a legitimate charging jacket. Um, so the only thing that I have really to go off of is, is if my low side keeps dropping like it did when I initially came here for the AC call. If the pressures were to still keep dropping, then I'd, I'd be more inclined to say that I didn't completely fix the issue. But the fact that both of my pressures are rising, that kind of lets me know that my the system's doing what it's supposed to do. It's just I'm trying to operate it outside of regular testing conditions. Um, this would really suck if I got this wrong. It would really suck. But that's a part of the game. I mean, you want to do your best to get the correct diagnosis, um, and it's the best diagnosis I could come up with at the time. So I'm hoping that everything's running. I mean, right now, pressures are still going up. Saturation is going up. So I'm gonna check Delta T's and we'll go from there. I realized I didn't even really go into this one that much. We got a duplex that they want an inspection done on, service cleaning, all that good jazz. Jacob's gonna start on that one, taking that apart, cleaning the condenser and i'll come back to do the heating components on that side i'm gonna start with the heating components on this side and then he'll come back and do the condenser um i'll probably only show me just doing that one and then him cleaning that one because they're pretty much the exact same unit the boy better be spotless gonna be beautiful all right
Got the first unit we were working on. Got this one running. Flames looking good. We're gonna go ahead and just get Delta T's on this one. We can't get this one on because we can't find the thermostat for this one in the other apartment. Um, which we'll do our best. This lockbox, the lockboxes on site aren't working. Um, one of the buttons, like it for the code just isn't responding and this one is locked on the doorknob the two front on, on the front of the house we were able to get in for the duplex but that's gonna that's gonna do it for today this is gonna be a long video i'm already aware but i hope it was informative i hope somebody was able to learn something from it um hopefully you liked it well enough to drop a like and subscribe be greatly appreciated what what i gotta ask the people to subscribe i gotta ask them to like they didn't watch they didn't made it to this part in the video they might as well just hit the like button and they might as well just subscribe if they've watched any other of my youtube videos so for that i hope everybody has a great day um stay safe and stay warm take care